The world was a vastly different place in its distant past, with many strange and unique dinosaur species roaming the planet. Today we're going to take a look at some dinosaurs you probably haven't heard of. Here are 15 rare dinosaurs you didn't know existed. Number 15. Utah Raptor First discovered in 1975, the Utah Raptor was, as the name suggests, a species of raptor that was native to the region that's now known as Utah. Remains have been found in various sites across the state and are thought to have been the largest species of raptor to have ever lived. They thrived in the area during the early Cretaceous period, between 145 and 100 million years ago, and would have been a deadly force to contend with, especially when they hunted in packs. They are thought to have grown up to around 23 feet long and weighed as much as 1,100 pounds, which means they would have been a similar size and weight as a polar bear. With rows upon rows of razor-sharp teeth and 15-inch long claws, they were agile and fierce hunters and would have targeted prey in a similar way to how big cats do today, in that they would have taken several targeted bites and waited for their victims to weaken before going in for the kill. Although fossilized evidence hasn't been found, Utah raptors are generally believed to have been feathered which would have been vital in their temperature regulation and suggest they may have been early ancestors of modern-day species of birds. Number 14. Giraffe Titan At first, paleontologists thought that the Giraffe Titan was a species of Brachiosaurus that was native to Africa, but after discovering further fossils, it was determined that it was an entirely new species in its own right. Once thought to have been the biggest species of dinosaur to have ever lived, we now know that there are several larger ones. But this doesn't take away quite from how gigantic and domineering the Giraffe Titan would have been. Giraffe Titans lived during the late Jurassic period around 152 million years ago, and the main source of fossils have been a formation in modern day Tanzania, although it's thought that they would have roamed across the entire continent of what is now Africa. Estimates based on the fossils that have been found propose these beasts were up to 74 feet long, 39 feet tall, and could weigh as much as 86 tons although some specimens have been discovered that suggest they could have been even larger than this. As a species of sauropod, they had four tree trunk-sized legs and extremely long necks that allowed them to feed on the foliage of trees. Strangely, their nostrils were surprisingly high up on their heads, which led to some researchers to believe they spent most of their lives underwater. But recent studies have shown that the water pressure around their bodies would have been too much and would have prevented them from being able to breathe. It's therefore now generally accepted that these huge creatures were fully terrestrial. Number 13. Euteranus Euteranus was only a relatively recently discovered dinosaur, having only been officially named in 2012. But the remains that have been found are extremely important because they represent the largest dinosaur fossils to have ever been studied that show evidence of the presence of feathers. They lived in northeastern China during the early Cretaceous period, around 140 million years ago, and were carnivorous predators. Measuring up to 30 feet long and weighing up to one and a half tons, their skulls are thought to have been around 40 inches long, and they had flat tongues similar to those of crocodiles. Only three sets of fossils have ever been found, and all of them were next to each other. In the mud around them, there were imprints of feathers that once lined their bodies, and the fragments of fossils that remained were so large were broken up into manageable chunks so they could be transported away. Their close proximity to each other, according to researchers, suggests they were pack hunters, and it's likely they worked together to take down huge sauropods. If this is the case, they're only one of two species from the region known to do so, which shows just how deadly and capable the Euteranus was. Number 12. Baryonyx First found in Surrey, England in 1983, the Baryonyx was a theropod dinosaur that lived around 130 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period. Very few specimens have ever been on Earth, so most of what we know about this species is an educated guess. But they're believed to have grown to around 33 feet long and weighed up to 2 tons. Their name means heavy claw, which is in reference to an extremely large claw that they had on their first finger, and this is a clue to how they hunted. Fish scales were also found with their remains, and this claw would have been used to stab fish in the water for food by using a technique very similar to spearfishing. They would have also been able to target terrestrial prey with it and inflict a fatal wound before moving in to devour the meat once the victim had bled out. They had long snouts and flat tongues, so their heads looked similar to those of crocodiles. And because of the incredible height of the vertebra seen in their spines, it's believed that they had a hump or ridge along their backs. Quite how spread around the world they were isn't known yet, and it'll only be with the discovery of further fossils that we fully understand how this species lived. 
Number 11. Dreadnoughtus Generally regarded to have been the largest species of dinosaur to have ever lived, at least as far as we know, the Dreadnoughtus was the biggest terrestrial animal that's ever been found. We only know of them because of two partial skeletons that were uncovered in a fossil deposit in Argentina, and based on these, it's thought that these gigantic creatures would have grown up to 85 feet long and weighed up to 42 tons. Their necks alone were 37 feet long, and if these estimates are correct, it means that they were heavier and bigger than more than 10 African elephants, although not everyone is convinced they truly grew to such an incredible size. They lived during the late Cretaceous period, between 84 and 66 million years ago, and even though they were herbivores, there wouldn't have been a predator alive that stood a chance against a fully grown one. This wouldn't have been the case for juveniles, however, and it's thought that they roamed the land in large packs to protect the weakest from attack. It's because of this that they were given the name Dreadnoughtus, which according to the paleontologist who first discovered the fossils, means fear nothing, because it was time herbivores got their due for being one of the toughest creatures in the environment. Number 10. Gigantoraptor The Gigantoraptor was a huge species of raptor that lived across Asia during the late Cretaceous period, around 100 to 66 million years ago. The first remains were only found in 2001, but since then a large number have been found that have allowed researchers to learn a lot more about how they developed and their lifestyles. They grew to around 26 feet long and 16 feet tall, with a weight of up to 1.4 tons. But it's possible they could get much larger than this if they were able to live for long enough. Based on their skeletal structure, it's thought that gigantoraptors walked in a bird-like manner, but right now there's no evidence to suggest whether they were feathered or not. Gigantoraptors lived in a cutthroat world, though surrounded by fierce competition for food. To give them an edge in this environment, they had viciously sharp teeth and claws, but surprisingly were omnivorous, meaning that if they weren't able to capture prey, they could instead turn to vegetation to get the nutrients they needed. This is the main reason it's thought this species lasted for so long, because they were able to adapt throughout the seasons and could endure prolonged periods without seeing other living animals. Number 9. Amargosaurus Dating from the early Cretaceous period around 125 million years ago, only one set of fossilized remains have been found from the Amargosaurus. But as a virtually complete skeleton, it's been enough to learn a lot about this little-known species of dinosaur. They prowled the forested areas across South America and were a species of sauropod which grew to around 33 feet long. Compared to other sauropods, this was relatively small, but they would have been one of the largest creatures in the regions where they lived. From studies of the spine, it's immediately apparent that they had growths along their necks, and researchers aren't yet clear whether these would have been visible as large spines, or form the structural support for a larger appendage like a skin sail. Furthermore, they had quite short legs in comparison to the size of their bodies, and this is a telltale sign for a slow-moving animal that was probably even unable to stand up on its rear legs. The Amargosaurus fossil was found alongside those of large predatory species and other sauropods, so it's quite possible they were routinely attacked by carnivores, but quite how they defended against this is not yet clear. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Kalinda Dromius. The Kalindodromius was a species of dinosaur that lived in modern-day Russia during the Jurassic period from around 180 million years ago. At just five feet long, they had short heads and forearms, but a long tail and rear legs, which would suggest that they were fast runners. They were covered in feathers, but instead of having just one type of structure, there were three. The first type of feathers were similar to hairs and covered their necks and heads. The second type projected downwards from the base plate and the final type of feather was on the upper arms and thighs. As well as these, they also had three different types of scales, and this species is the only example that's been found that show such complex structures. Based on their dental structures, Kalindodromus is known to have been a herbivore and likely fed on low-lying bushes and shrubs. Their speed was their main difference against predators, and it's likely that they moved around in flocks, similar to how birds do today. Some would keep watch for danger while others fed, and if there was even a slight sign of threat, they'd all run in the same direction to distract and confuse anything trying to hunt them. Number 7. Incisivosaurus The Incisivosaurus was first scientifically described in 2002 after the discovery of several fossils in a deposit in China. 
Dating to the Barmian Age around 126 million years ago, they were a small species that grew no more than 3.3 feet long and would have weighed up to 10 pounds. Covered in feathers, they had plumages along their arms, at the tip of their tails, and on their heads, and the most notable feature of the species was their elongated jaws with prominent rodent-like teeth. Those that have been found show the types of markings you'd expect to see from a plant-eating animal, but the presence of sharper teeth suggests that they were in fact omnivores, although it's unlikely they had enough bulk to actively hunt other animals, and would most likely have been opportunistic feeders on the remains of prey that had been killed by a different predator. Despite being covered in feathers, incisivosaurs wouldn't have been able to fly, and instead they were used to help regulate their body temperature, and are thought to have had feathers more similar to those of a penguin than other birds. Number 6. Concavenator Fossils of the concavenator have been found in several sites in Spain, and were given a name that means the hunchback hunter from Cuenca, in reference to an unusual growth that protruded from their backs. Rather than being a longer sail like that of the Spinosaurus, only a few of the concavenator's vertebrae were enlarged, but quite how this was advantageous to the animal isn't exactly clear. Some have suggested that it was used in a similar way to a head crest in mating displays, but also could have been used as a nutrient store or a way to regulate blood temperature. They grew up to 19 feet long and lived during the Cretaceous period around 130 million years ago, where with their sharp teeth, they likely hunted creatures that were their own size or smaller. When they were first discovered a decade ago, they made quite the stir in the scientific circles, but not because of their strange backs. Their forearm bones were seen to have nodules that are similar to those on modern-day birds, which would suggest that this species of dinosaur had feathers on parts of their bodies. This predates any other known feathered species of dinosaur, and shows that feathered structures developed tens of millions of years earlier than previously thought. There remains some debate as to whether this actually does mean that they were feathered, though and it could be a way that the muscles attach to the bone. Only the discovery of further fossils will answer the question for certain, but the chances are that the concavenator featured at least a few primitive feathers on its arms. Number 5. Cosmoceratops The Triceratops is one of the most recognizable species of dinosaur, but as far as the number of horns go, they were in no way the most spectacular of the dinosaurs. A close relation of theirs, the Cosmoceratops lived in North America during the late Cretaceous period around 76 million years ago and has a name that translates to mean ornate horned face. It's thought that they grew up to 15 feet long and weighed up to 1.3 tons. They had heavy set bodies with a triangular beak and a flattened nasal passage. The horns were their most obvious feature though, not just because of the number, but because of their shape. In close relatives such as Triceratops, the horns above the eyes point forwards but those of the Cosmoceratops pointed up, then to the side, then downwards, and ended with a pointed tip. In total, they had 15 horns, which is by far the most of any known dinosaur species. Along with fleshy frills that grew around their necks, they would have been an ominous creature to encounter, and their interspecies dominance fighting and mating rituals would have been a sight to behold. Their horns would have also been an effective way to fend off predators, which would have been vital at the time. They lived alongside some of history's most ferocious hunters, such as the Utah Raptor. So since they were too heavy to move quickly, they had no choice but to stand firm and fight for their survival. Number 4. Erictodromius Remains of the Erictodromius have been found in Montana and Idaho from the Cenomanian age around 95 million years ago. They were a member of a family of herbivorous dinosaurs known for fast running, but this species exhibited a behavior that you wouldn't expect from a dinosaur they lived in burrows that they dug underground. The reason we know this is that one group of three fossilized specimens was found in a burrow that was entered through a six and a half foot long and two and a half foot wide tunnel. But there's another clue from looking at their fossilized skeletons. There are specific adaptations that can be seen in their jaws and forelimbs, which look very similar to those in present day burrowing creatures like today's rabbits. A fully grown Erictodromius would have been up to seven feet long and weighed as much as 70 pounds although juveniles who are thought to have spent most of their time underground were about half this. Because of their burrowing and agile nature, they were given a name that literally means digging runner. They would have given birth and tended to their young in the lair and foraged for vegetation on the jungle floor to bring back. Their fast speed would have been used for just one thing, to evade predators until they were back in the safety of their burrow. As a relatively small species, they'd have been a highly sought after meal for a number of other animals at the time. So without their speed and ability to burrow, there's no way they'd have been able to survive. Number three, the Zujasaurus. 
The Zhuzhousaurus, which means the Zhuzhou lizard, is a species that once roamed regions of China during the early Cretaceous period, around 125 million years ago. They were part of a group of dinosaurs called Therizinosauroids, which were small herbivorous theropods, but the Zhuzhousaurus was one of the largest varieties. Only two specimens have ever been found, but based on them, it's thought that this species grew to at least 20 feet long and could weigh a whopping three tons. They were herbivores and virtually every part of their anatomy was adapted to help them search for and retrieve food. They had, for example, long claws and necks so they could reach high branches and would walk on their two hind limbs so their forearms were always available to sift through potential food sources. They had shorter tails than most other dinosaur species and are thought by some to have had bodies covered in fur. It's likely that they thrived in a very specific area of China, in Mazongshan and Jinquan, which was a huge lake at the time and was surrounded by small hills. This would have been the perfect spot to graze on plant life while keeping an eye out for miles around for predators, which would have been especially important for the Shuzosaurus, which was one of the largest herbivores in the ecosystem. Number two, Crylophosaurus. When we imagine dinosaurs and the environment they lived in, we quite often picture either barren terrain surrounded by volcanoes or areas of lush vegetation. The truth, though, is that the climate around the world was just as varied back then as it is today, and there were species of dinosaurs that were adapted to virtually every region. Possibly the most surprising, then, is the Crylophosaurus, which lived during the early Jurassic period around 200 million years ago, in what is now Antarctica. While the continent may not have been covered in ice at the time, it was closer to the equator and had jungles it would still have been much colder than most other places, and Crylophosaurus had a number of adaptations to ensure its survival. It's only within the past 40 years that any dinosaur fossils have been found on the continent, and from what's been seen so far, life was quite different for the animals that lived there in comparison to the related species around the rest of the world. Crylophosaurus, for example, were probably covered in a thick layer of fur, and there's a suggestion that they ran for most of the time that they were awake in order to help generate extra warmth to counteract the weather. Thought to grow to up to 21 feet long and weigh up to a ton, the Crylophosaurus would have been one of the top predators in the region, and is the largest known theropod from anywhere in the world during the early Jurassic. The structure of their skull suggests that they would have had an unusual crest that instead of running alongside their heads, actually stood up and ran across them. And it's possible this was used primarily as a way of attracting a mate. Number 1. Shianshosaurus the most famous dinosaur of all time was undoubtedly the Tyrannosaurus rex, but it was just one of several related species, each of which had their own unique adaptations, and all of which were as deadly as each other. While the T. rex lived throughout North America, one of its cousins, known as the Chianchusaurus, was one of the apex predators across Asia during the late Cretaceous period, around 66 million years ago. Thought to have grown to around 21 feet long and weighing as much as a one and a half tons, they had longer legs than the T. rex, which means they were probably able to run much faster. The other distinguishing feature that separates them from other tyrannosaurs was the shape of their head, which has led them to being given the nickname Pinocchio Rex. That's because despite having a smaller mouthful of teeth to a T-Rex, their snouts were much longer and more slender and had a row of horns on top. The recent discovery of a fully grown Shianshusaurus has confirmed a long-held theory that the tyrannosaur family was far broader than originally thought. While it had long been known that there were many similar species to the Tyrannosaurus rex, it now seems like there was a whole subgroup of Tyrannosaurus with elongated skulls, and it's likely various different species of the predators would have lived in the same regions as each other at the same time, and may have even hunted and bred with one another. This also raises the question of whether there are any other subgroups that are yet to be discovered. But one thing's for sure, no matter the species or the subgroup of Tyrannosaur, they would have all been equally as deadly as one another and would have spelled bad news for any animal unfortunate enough to be stood in their path. Watch our Animals playlist for more Top 15 videos about animals. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best animal-related videos.